I'm Mary Ann Salcido and I'm affiliated with Central Connecticut State University and I'll be conducting the interview. Please, what's the name of your service branch? The Navy. USS Navy. The U.S. Navy. And you, your rank was? Seaman First Class. And you served in the... What? I served in the Asiatic Pacific Theater. Okay. Um, Okay, Lois, just to get started, um, were you drafted or were you enlisted when you were... I was, uh, I was drafted September the 8th, 1943. I turned 18 years old and I received my draft notice that I had to go for a physical down in New Haven. And then the process started from there. After the examination, we went through a process of being interviewed by all branches of the service. We were interviewed by the Army. As I remember, then we had to go into the Navy recruiters, Marine recruiters, Coast Guard recruiters. And after each interview, they would ask us what service we would like to go to or be assigned to. And of course, I preferred the Navy, being a person that enjoyed the water, and I was very, always interested in ships, and I told them that I would be, uh, I would be grateful if they would give me a chance to serve in the Navy. You know. At that time, they had quotas for each branch. The day we went down there, there was a group of about 40 of us from Waterbury, and they had to take so many for each unit. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate that I was chosen to go with the Navy. They only took it that day, I remember, about 12 12 of us oh, wow. were, we were, we were assigned to the Navy section and there was so many to the Army, so many to the Marine Corps. And then from there you went to your personal interviews with just that one branch of, of the service. And uh, they put you through small tests, just asking you about the, what you would like to do in the service, what your thoughts were and all that. But when you're young like that, you didn't know where, where you were going. You just I was happy that I was accepted, that I passed my physical. Now, were any of your friends, did you enlist with any of your friends? Well, when we were down there, we knew. Well, there was, I think from the Waterbury area, I remember, I must have had at least, I'd say between six to eight real close friends when we went down there. In fact, I went down there with one of my cousins, Vincent Bianco. He and I went down there, but there's, there's so many more I remember from, from the clubs that I played with, played ball with that we went down. And uh, once you get there, uh, they start, after I was accepted in the, in the Navy, we were given a choice as to what our preference would be as an assignment. Of course, not being familiar with all that, we just said, you know, we're going to take potluck wherever they send us. So at that time, most of us were going to be assigned to the Samson Training Center, that's up in New York, for our for our what they call boot training. So when we started, that that happened in September. After all the exams and all, we went, I returned back home, and uh, it wasn't I'd say uh, it was in October that I received the initial results that I was accepted and that I had a way to when I was going to be recalled. And as luck would have it, they decided, the authorities down there decided that they weren't going to take, take any, of the, any of the fellows in that group until after the holidays. So we were fortunate. We stayed home for Thanksgiving, stayed home for Christmas, and we stayed home for New Year's. And then right after that, we, it wasn't only a short time after that that we were, we were called. And we all we we shipped out right down to New Haven. Then the rest was history. We, <laughs> we were put on a bus, took us to the station, on the train, and then we ended up in Sampson, New York, for our basic training. Now is that upstate New York? Or? That's upstate New York, from what I remember. And we went up there. Of course, we went up there in January, February, and it was cold. Yep. That was our first experience. <laughs> and it was cold, and the <laughs> barracks were cold. Um, now what was it like when you were in boot camp? Once again, about your, 
experiences yes. in the boot camp? When we arrived there, I was surprised, and I think the rest of us too, as we approached the barracks area, we started to meet up with all different groups. There was about 40 of us from Connecticut, and we had a large group from Pennsylvania, quite a few from the southern states. Altogether, a total of about 300 of us were assigned to this group of barracks. And from there, we, if I remember right, we, we met our instructors and they went over the complete process, but then they gave us a complete uh, briefing about the barrack conditions, what they expected, and they told us all the type of trainings we were going to receive. And actually, actually, they told us about lights out at 10 o'clock. And uh, from that day on, then we were, we knew we were tied in with the Navy. Mm -hmm. And what, what I remember there is our trainings started every morning. Well, we were up at, we were up roughly, I'd say, about 6 o'clock in the morning. We had a shower and shave. And we had to we had to go off to for child time. We was we had to get there for quarter to seven. Our unit had to get there for quarter to seven. And after after our meals, we had to report back to our barracks, and then we would go into different trainings. There was many a day they would just bring us down to the swimming pool. We had to learn all about how to escape from ships. If, if our ships were hit, we had to learn how to how to get off the ship, how to handle ourselves in the water, uh, different ways we could save each other. And uh, that was one phase of it. And then we had an awful lot of training. Just in, well, we had a lot of calisthenics, an awful lot of training on that every day. And from there on in, then we were assigned different groups. A lot of us were on KP, which was normal. We were assigned to the kitchen duty. Then you were assigned to guard duty. And from there, we, we went to a few different schools uh, just to train us more in, the, in our behaviors. So we could, I guess at that time, we didn't realize about it, the training we were going to get was going to help us to complete war after we were out there. Uh, let's see. So at the, at the training camp, was it similar to what they did in the army or was it completely different? Was there like, well, like you said, the pool? Well, what, what happened there is the basic trains was just like the army or all the services. But after the calisthenics and all the briefings and, and the marches they, they put us on with our backpacks and all that, little by little that disappeared and then little by little they just put us into into being adjusted to the Navy, which had it which had to do with with the discipline of being on board a ship or, or being assigned to different naval stations. But the, the basic the, after the basic training, then uh, we were separated and put into different divisions and we were I think every one of us were actually schooled or, or measured out to see where they would place us and they were looking for radio men they were looking for signal men they were looking for uh, trainees in the engine rooms in the in the boiler rooms and uh, I was fortunate that eventually I ended up with the cooks and the bakers I got involved with them, and uh, after I left boot camp, for my assignments after that, I was I was always a, a ship they call a ship striker. I was striking for a position in the in the baking division, which I eventually eventually I received it after quite a while. Um. Now, do you remember any of your instructors there? Any? No. I, nothing specific. Well, there wasn't any ones that stand out because basically we had we met up with a lot of them. We went to the the uh, what they call the PT training, 
When you went there, you always met up with different instructors. Put you through the collar, the calisthenics, put you through all the uh, the rigors of uh, climbing, rope climbing, how to escape from a ship, how to fight fires. They taught us we had to get involved in fighting ship fires, which was a good experience, but it was scary. Of course, we were all young, you know, so this was the first experience for all of us. But basically, we only it only took six weeks because you know, there was a it was a quick training session because if everything was moving fast and it took us six weeks and then we ended up with a I think all of us we have 14 day leave to go back home and then once once we returned then everybody was separated I mean who went to the, who went to the ships who went to different islands who stayed in in the states I mean we just lost contact with everybody next thing you know we're meeting up with all new people. They said that's that's the way it worked, and that was that's how we started traveling, looking for. When they put us out to these different stations, we were interviewed. These these stations I speak of are the training stations mm -hmm. that they would put us there, and you would wait for your assignment, and whatever. And little by little, constant interviews and this and that. Little by little, you know you were going to be placed, and eventually that's what happened to. I, in my situation, that's what happened. Yeah, for me, <clears throat> and that's how I eventually was sent to a uh, destroyer training school, and then I started. I was involved with this ship right until I, uh, right until I uh, was, uh, I was what do you call, discharged. Yes. Um, now we're going to go into your experiences into the service. Um, anything you'd like to yeah. share with us right off? Well. After, after boot camp, I was assigned to Destroyer Training School in Norfolk, Virginia. It was a six-week training period where we were involved in all tactical maneuvers with, a, with, the, with our ship. Uh, we used landing crafts. We learned about all the firing of the guns, 20 millimeters, 40 millimeters. And some of us were assigned to the five-inch gun mounts, which was the larger. Every one of us had, in other words, we had experience. We were taught how to handle all the different firearms. And many of us trained below decks. We learned all about the boiler room and the engine rooms. And, and everybody had a, had a little smattering of everything. And of course, this, this was just one of the, all the different situations that could come up or any emergencies we were. We went through all the training. It took six weeks. Of course, we did a lot of calisthenics. We did a lot of training. We, uh, we were always on the beach area there, learning how to land crafts, how to survive, all the different trainings that you need for, for warfare. We, if I remember right, when we were completed with that training, our ship was commissioned uh, I think July. It was a new ship. It was uh, commissioned July of '44, and from there, once the once they made up the crew, they had to get electricians. They had to get uh, cooks, bakers. They always had to have so many seamen to handle all the ropes and the lines. They needed electricians, and uh, no matter what you could think about, if you had in your home, they had people to do everything. We had plumbers, we had, we had whatever you could think of, we had them, everybody was trained. In our crew, there was, if I believe, there was 356 personnel aboard to handle, handle the, the ship. We were, we went aboard in July and we trained with that destroyer, I think almost four months, five months. And once the ship had a shakedown, once it was all tested, once all the equipment was tested, and all the little bugs were taken out of the ship, we were assigned to, we were assigned to the Pacific area. And that was the best experience we had. Once we started out in the Pacific, that's where all, all the real experience came in. Every day we had to go to general quarters, it was scary in the beginning, but little by little, you 
we were used to it. Now, what exactly was general quarters? Just general quarters was just plain training. They would we had the bells. They would ring the bells. General quarters, and they would time us how long it would take us to get to our stations, our battle stations. But it was constant training. This was something that happened every day. And they give us notice. They would just sound the alarm. And no matter what you were doing, what other jobs you were doing, your your main thing was to get to your battle stations. But that was it. Was good training, and uh, this went on until we were actually in, in. We actually reached our destination, which was in the the uh, Marshall Group of Islands, and there was the Carol Carolyn Islands, something like that. For the oh the Ulithi, the Ulithi chain that was that ended up our home base where all our operations came from. Now, what was your position on the ship? What did you? Well, once uh, once I was assigned there, the main job I had was with the Seaman Group, but then I was transferred into the Baker's Division because I wanted to get into baking. But my main assignment I was trained to be what they call a lookout. There was a group of us that were assigned as lookouts. We had three ships all the time. You had a, we say we had the 12 to 4 watch, 4 to 8. The ship was constant, the lookouts were constantly up on the bridge, the highest part of the ship. You had starboard lookouts, port lookouts. And that was the most exciting thing for, for me and for a lot of the ones that were in that position. It was an important job the way I felt it. You had to be always looking out for submarines, for for anything that was in the way, mines in the water, any type of structure, we were we were constantly on patrol with the ship, which was that was the exciting part. You were always out looking for whatever we had to come across. And, but my basic job after that was when I get off duty there, I was down with the Cooks gang. I was with the Bakers, and then one of the important jobs I was assigned to after that was I was put in charge of the storerooms. So I was in charge of all the food lockers. Uh -huh. So everybody, so I, I got to have a lot of friends <laughs> when I was in charge of the food lockers. There was 18 storage areas for food, for all the canned, canned goods and all the dry staples. But then we had three refrigerators. We had three refrigerators that took care of, uh, took care of our meats. We had a section to take care of the cold milk the eggs. So and with that being in charge of that, it was a good bookkeeping track because I kept track right. of all the supplies and uh, that was a, that was a good learning experience. Now how difficult yeah. was it to, to make food for all those men? Well we had a, we had a group of uh, the, the cooks uh, to take care of uh, that group there on the ship. Uh, if I remember right, we had uh, approximately four Four cooks. There was two bakers, and then we had a, a chief who controlled the whole operation. He was the chief petty officer, and then we had a, a first-class petty officer who could fill in at any time. So there was approximately about a good eight of us that took care of it there. And they all worked the same shifts. They had shifts working all around the clock, and. Uh, of course, for us, I mean, for that group there, it was always an adventure because every day we had, a, we had to follow the menu and get it out and take care of a, a, the crew. And uh, the exciting time is when sometimes you have, you'd be having general quarters. When we got into the battle areas, the general quarters would come. Sometimes you miss your lunch, you couldn't cook. But it was, that was like the funny part of it too because Everybody's complaining they didn't eat, they didn't do this and that, but that was, that was just all part of the operation. And then from there, uh, if I remember right, when we were up in the combat areas, uh, you would finish up there if it was an operation that would last, say, uh, uh, let's say it would last maybe just a 10 day operation. And when you were completed with that, you would return back to we would be about 60 or 80 miles away from, from all the action. They would bring you back when they would call it R&R, &R, which was rest and recreation. Mm -hmm. And it, it, that was where the fun began because you was, we used to go on the islands. And uh, that, that was where we had the fun with all the fellas. You were able to play ball, swim, 
and, and, and relax for maybe another 10 days. And uh, the, the fun part of it was in the evenings where we were all, all the ships were tied up, everybody had a movie going. So they used, you know, used to have the movie up on the, you used to have the big screen and we were able to sit and watch a movie almost every night. Oh, wow. that, that, was, that was what they called the fun time. And then after that, uh, when things got real serious there, then we got involved in all these different, different uh, skirmishes. Once, once we started to move up, we had to start moving up from, from the Carolyn I was in the Marshall Group. We started to go up, and we ended up going up into, uh, let me see if I remember right. We start going up into the Philippines. We went into the Lady, the Lady Bay there, and we helped in the liberation of the Philippines. And then we had to go into Okinawa. We helped out there. Saipan, uh, Iwo Jima, and then we invaded, well, we, this was the other part, we went into the South China Sea, and uh, we had a, a lot of conflict in there, but we did an awful lot of, of uh, well, we had a lot of skirmishes with a lot of the spy ships that were out there. And, and one of the one of the excitements that we had our ship is we were operating with the carrier the Hancock and uh, the Hancock was hit by a kamikaze and blew up the top of their deck blew a lot of men into the water and there was four or five destroyers that used to protect the carriers and we were right alongside when this happened, and uh, we all remembered it. We had to take these fellows aboard. Most of them were burnt, covered with oil, and uh, we remember taking them aboard. We had quite a few there, and they had to be transferred. And the Hancock had to leave that area because it was on fire. And fire was finally put out, but the Hancock was the upper part was all destroyed. And that, that I think sums it up with the, what we had. Of course, the great day we had is when the war was over, we went into Tokyo Bay. We went into Tokyo Bay and they signed the, the treaty. Um, let's see. Now, did you get any medals, any different citations? Well, our ship, let's see, the, our ship received we had one commendation from our CO, and then of course our ship was involved in uh, four. We had four battle stars from the Asiatic Pacific Medal, and then the Philippine Liberation Ribbon. That was also another another good sir, skirmish there up in the Bay Area in the Philippines, and. Uh, we received four stars in the Asiatic Pacific and one battle star for for the Philippine invasion. I believe that's that was the that was our main that was our main concern there. Um, anything else you'd like to say about you know and anything involved in any stuff like that? Well, we had. I think the greatest thing we had was that I enjoyed, I mean, of course I was young at the time, but I mean we, I enjoyed it a lot because we did, with the, uh, with our ship, what I remember most was when we traveled to get to the Pacific, coming through the Panama Canal, that was a great experience, to see how the locks worked, how they transferred the ships, and uh, we would end up with some, we were, our ship was nowhere near the size of the carriers or the cruisers, mm. and uh, we had a few battle uh, battleships that we went down there with, and uh, it was great to see how that how they operated there. We spent some time in the Panama area, and uh, I think the next experience we had, which was good for all of us, 
is when they brought us out of there and we shipped up from the Pacific. We went up into the coast, up into San Francisco. We stayed there for a while where our, we had to get all out, our ship had to get outfitted for going into the Pacific. And that was a good experience because there was an awful lot of training there for a lot of the crews. And uh, we had, uh, I remember there all of us uh, had the experience of meeting these, uh, well they were what they called the working ships. They were, they were our tenders, we called them tenders. But they, they used to come on our ships and outfit the ships with whatever had to meet the requirements to go out to war. And from there, the next experience we had, which we all enjoyed, is when we hit, we hit Hawaii, mm -hmm. we hit Honolulu, we hit the, that, that was, that was something good to see too from, that was, that was a lot of fun time. Yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of, that was experience. But the, the best thing after all this, you know, when, after everybody was used to one another, because we were on the ship for quite a while, the best part was all the friends you make. And all the, all the, uh, the sitting down and talking and the stories that were told. And we had a lot of fun times. On, I remember on the stern of the ship, especially after we had our, our supper. Our, most of us used to go down there and sit on the back and who who play a guitar and who do some singing. And it's just we had we had a lot of fun. There was a lot of fun with it too. But when we had to get serious, everybody everybody got serious. And then, of course, we we had we had a lot of a lot of real skirmishes where a lot of our ships were hit, but uh, most of them most of them at least they were they were hit there, but we were able to save a lot of them, you know. And the other the only other scary part that I can remember is we had a lot of these cami cats. Mm -hmm. Japanese were known for that, for coming down in and, and crashing right into the ships. Right. And uh, that went on. Anytime we met up with them or you know they were out there, that was one of the main things we had to look out for all the time. Because they would come right down at them and, and we had the, we had some hard times with them, all the ships that we were out there. And, and I think another thing that you have to know about even the service, because when I was in the Navy I might be partial, but to see the groups of ships that, the fleets that we joined up with out there, you could almost walk on the water with them. That's how many that were so close. When we, when we were going for all these big invasions, the task force that would assemble in the different areas to go up on these operations, I said, you, you know, mm. you can't, you can never imagine it. And the, and the aircraft carriers, you know, the airplanes that were there, it was just, it was just great experience. I think for anybody that was able to see it and, and see it all, it, it was, it was great. But it was it was nice when it was over too. Let's see. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about life, actually, on the ship itself. You know, follow well, follow more along with the. Um, did you do anything interesting? Like, do you guys have any special things you guys did, like games? Oh well, I mean, uh, <laughs> there was always card games. Mm -hmm. Every night you had card games, but. For, rec for recreation, you play checkers, play cards. We had a lot of storytelling. You'd be surprised all the older, because when they when they mix you on a ship, they put so many young, mm -hmm. so many older people. So it's a it's a it's a mesh of all different people. I mean, we we had some older sailors there. We were the youngest. There was a group of us yeah, that were strictly seamen, but we were young compared to some of these experienced uh, sailors. But uh, there was a lot of yarns that were told at night, especially when you had had break, you know. And even during the day, if, if you had a break, I mean, there'd be always, there'd be always storytelling. That was, that was one of the great, great things was storytelling. I mean, sometimes I don't know how many were true, but we had a lot of fun. And that was, that was a pass of time. Then a lot of us, you know, uh, this past time, I mean, a lot of them were craftsmen. You know, they would weave things, and uh, this was weave. There was one friend of mine that used to do all this all the time. Just weave all these, oh. these different. He made all the different uh, bracelets, and he made necklaces. He did everything. There's quite a few of them. And another thing, a lot of us did 
we took pictures. Oh. And we had one fellow there, he was a good friend of mine, and uh, he was a photographer out of New York. But we made a nice, what he called a regular small room. He made it so he could he could uh, develop the, the pictures and all. So <laughs> they were taken and he would develop them. And, uh, so, and that was a fun thing for a lot of the fellows that had cameras, you know. We were, we were able to take some take some pictures and I think that's where uh, that's where today I have a lot of different pictures of my friends and uh, it's been quite a while. Now um, when you guys were on leave you because you had mentioned that um, what, what things did you guys do? Did you go to the city sightsee? Well when we hit you know, most of the cities you know that, that we ended up hitting uh, most, most of your uh, most of the recreation you had then, like I say, you were always tied up with the ship. Most of us, when you had a liberty, you know, you would, you would always go out, I know, with the group I went with. We always had to make sure we went to a good restaurant. You know. <laughs> we always went out, we always went out to eat. And uh, went to a lot of USO gatherings where you danced. Right. And you, you, you passed away some time like that. And I know down in, uh, well, in, in, in Frisco and in San Diego that we went to a lot of places there while our ship was being outfitted. And, uh, and, the, and the good thing about that, uh, there was a lot of areas, especially in that area there out on the coast, where a person like me I never saw before. I was only, I was young, but it was just go to see all the places out there. Uh, we were able to take the take the train, not the train, the trolleys out that way, which is, was, it was a fun thing to do. But uh, most of uh, most of the recreation that I was on was go see a, go to a theater, especially even in New York, most of us took in the theaters. As far as, as far as uh, enjoying myself drinking, I wasn't, I wasn't much for that. But a lot of my friends, uh, they had a gay time just doing that, but most of us were conservative. And the ones that I went with, we a good movie, something to eat, and we used to go to the USO. You dance, and you and you meet all, and, and there you meet an awful lot of fellas from all over, which was a good experience. You know, you talk to them all about different places they were at, where we were. That's most of what we did. You know. Okay. Um. Let's see. I think we'll move on to um. See, maybe discharge, and you know your time after the war, or you know. Well, after I was discharged in uh, what did I say in April? Towards the end of the war, like how were yeah. you guys? Well, during once the war was, uh, well, the war was, was over, and, and the uh, Japan surrendered. Uh, the duty on our ship and quite a few of the destroyers. Uh, believe me when I tell you, we were assigned to be in mail ships, mm -hmm. and we were we were we stayed in uh, we stayed in Sasebo, Japan, if I remember right, and uh, that was a bulk of the big mailing center in that whole area, and there was quite a few of us. We were assigned to the mail details, and we would take mail out of that main office in Sasebo, which was big, and we used to bring it up up to the different channels and different places and drop it off for for all the military men all that served up in true Japan and all along the, the uh, South China Sea there we were there and uh, we were assigned that duty from the time they surrendered and that was I think in, in August if I remember right August of 45 and uh, we stayed there until uh, Oh, I think we stayed there almost until uh, November, December, and from that point down, they started discharging some of our crew, and most of the older men were able to leave while we were still out there. They, were, they used to fly them back into Japan and then fly them home, and by the time we were set, all the young fellows that were left there, we didn't have enough points to to be discharged, so we're the ones that took the ship back 
back from the, the Pacific area, South China Sea area, we're the ones that took it all the way home through the canal and back up to Brooklyn, New York. Now, did you have people that would come and fill those men's spots, the ones that had left, or? No, no wouldn't it? Once that ship, once they started to leave it, it was almost like a skeleton crew. But there was enough of us to bring it home. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a fun time, too. You never had to worry about it, right. <laughs> about general quarters or anything. And we came home, and we ended up in the Norfolk, and then we went up to Brooklyn Navy Yard, where from there, most of us left from there. And then by that time, there was new, new fellas coming aboard. And there was a lot of them, you know, that stayed in the Navy, a lot of them. When I left, a lot of my friends were wanting to stay there and make a career out of it. But we left there and we ended up in Lido Beach, oh. where we were processed. And then within a few days, you were home. Okay, let's so. see. That, so that brings us pretty much to the end of your service. Um, is there anything specific that you remember about the day that you were discharged? Well, <laughs> there are an awful lot of us out there in Lido Beach. <laughs> I mean, and. Uh, but the, like I say, it was run. It was run pretty smoothly. I mean, it wasn't. You know, you were all in different divisions. But the, the thing that they did there, they checked you for your health, and then every one of us were here interviewed. Mm -hmm. Is what our rights were when we went home. Who, you know, who, if you wanted to go to school, what the, they told us all about the GI Bill of Rights. They sat us down and explained uh, all the different benefits uh, we could get, and. Uh, but that didn't last. That only lasted a couple of days, and then once we were home, we were we were actually on our own, you know. Now, um, once you got back home, what did you did you what did you do? Did you you know well, just rest for a few you know? Oh, for a while. When I got back home, I got home in uh, April, May, and uh, I took it easy that for two or three months, and then I decided to go to school. But I, uh, I remember getting home the end of April, May, June, yeah, July, that was about it. And then I start uh, getting pretty serious about going to school. So then I went to school in September. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ended up in school for my four years. I got a degree and then I, I come out, come out of there. And then eventually I got my regular job with the with the post office. And as you said, your education was provided by the GI Bill. GI Bill was one of the things that they offered everybody at that time, you know. And it was good for a lot of a lot of the friends that I went to. And a lot of them, a lot of the fellows that I hung around with, a lot of them just went into the into the factories. But they went into the training divisions. They had a lot of training divisions. A lot of them ended up tool makers, die die casters. Uh, there's a lot of them that learned some good trades, I mean, they had comfortable lives. Yeah. Now, um, did you have any close friendships when you were in service? Well, the most exciting thing once we, once we, I left the service, we had, we kept in contact with quite a few, and it wasn't until I mean, I had friends that I had people in New York, some in Pennsylvania, but then we finally had a group. You left off on how you and some of your other servicemen met after the war? Yes, we, we met. There's only a few of us, if I remember, but uh, there was a few out there in New York, and in and, and Waterbury here alone there was a... Uh, there was my friend Phil, a group, a group of us from this area here, the Waterbury area, if I remember right, there was about four or five of us, some down in Bridgeport, and we had another group down in New York, and, but they were the founders, the ones from New York. I remember receiving a call, would I be interested <clears throat> in this reunion? And of course I said, yeah, well, you know, so then we had lists. They did an awful lot of legwork in New York, the fellows, and we had lists of all the men that were on the ship. In fact, I still have some today. 
we had a list of them and, and we started to send the letters out. And we started the first one. We started the first one out in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. And uh, we just tried it supposedly. And the response was so great. That started in 1986 and it's still going today. So it's uh, roughly what, 86? It's about 20. It's 86, it's 14. About 20 years old. It's 20 years and it's still going. Yeah. It's still going. Of course, the ones like me up in age, we don't do much traveling anymore. <laughs> but if they have it around our area, we go. But they've had it all over the United States. And it was a great experience just traveling traveling all to the different reunions once a year. And uh, a lot of us stayed in touch. And uh, there's still a few of us left in my age bracket <laughs> that, that were on the ship. There aren't that many left <clears throat> that were on the ship together. But we've had, we, that's what we had to, that was the best part of it all, meeting all these people and knowing them. True life, you know. In fact, the ones that I'm associated with now, there's only a couple of us left. I used to, you know, used to go up to, uh, used to go up to Massachusetts area with the four or five that were up there, but little by little we're dwindling. There, there's only a couple of us left, so. But it's good memories. I have met a lot of pictures, and a lot of, a lot of letters that they sent. We sent back and forth, and a lot of pictures of the ship and about a lot of our members. So it's, we had a good time. And once in a while I look through these books and all these different pictures and I reminisce. So it was a good experience for me. Now, um, as you mentioned, um, you went into being a postman for after the war in right. your career. Yeah, yeah. So I, I stayed with the... I, I always felt that I had to stay with some kind of a service. I was with this with the Navy and all that, but I felt I had to stay with some civil service. So I, I, I signed up and I had a, I went into the post office and I finished my career there after 39 years. So I, I was sort of, I was sort of tied in with, with the government for quite a few years. <laughs> um, let's see, now, did being in the Navy influence any of your feelings about the military or war or general anything like that? No, I uh, I I think in a, I think what I learned with the, with the military and uh, it, to this day I mean it's you know it was a good training for me good training for a lot of us in uh, and I think a lot of us in my age group at that time uh, the big thing was discipline, and we learned it good. And uh, when you get out, I carried it to this day as far as learning how to do things, learning how to survive, learning what's best for everybody, how to help other people, how to help my family. I said that was all part of part of getting from the service. I mean, if, if you're willing to learn and willing to accept the way you were trained, and you, you took it back home with you, you as far as I'm concerned, it was a good experience, a good experience. And uh, once you're over there and you learn the discipline and you know what it is, what it is to see uh, certain things take place in your life, you know, so you appreciate it all. I always appreciated the training we had because there was a lot of times when we were there, uh, certain things there, you, you were really, really scared. But uh, most of us, we got through it, you know, it took time, but, but uh, and it makes you very cautious, you know, so you don't, you don't end up being a risk taker. But uh, they trained us that way too. You know, we had, uh, we had one uh, commander on our ship that he always told us, he says, you have to have some fear in you so you can be careful. That's all he used to tell us. He says, he says, you can't just look at everything and think it's going to be all right. He says, he says, if there's a little fear in you, he says, you'll learn how to, how to think it over and, and what to do. You know? He says, in other words, without getting yourself killed. 
But uh, there was a lot of them like that, a lot of the experienced men. That, that's what I learned about them. And uh, the big thing was, the big thing I thought was uh, was the discipline that they they put on every one of us. And uh, it worked out for me. So. It worked out for all my friends too, all the ones that I've been tied in with now. We still talk about the Navy and uh, you know how they trained us. And it was very good. It made you very responsible, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you tell you end up you're responsible. When you come out, uh, you knew right from wrong and you knew what, what had to be done and, and it, it made for it made you for made a better person out of you. Now, um, okay, just to finish up, um, is there anything that you'd like to add that we didn't go over? Oh, I don't know. Just as a final thought, last Things. Let's see what else I, I think I covered it all. I think I covered it all. I didn't I mentioned all about the ships we were involved in. Of course. I think one of the experiences that I always enjoyed was was to uh, be involved with to be involved with a lot of these different seamen and different airmen that uh, that we came in contact with. There, there was there were so many so many of them that we met through meeting them on the ships in different ports we went to. Uh, that I think uh, you could write a book about so many characters you met, all good people, but uh, I don't think I'd ever give that up. Now when I look back now, I said I never would give it up for all the people I met, all the different uh, services that we met up with during all the different skirmishes and the invasions. There's a lot of good people out there and a lot of good serious people today in the military. Pretty much it. I think that's it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Lewis, for your contribution. Thank you. And I hope you had a good time. I did. I enjoyed it. All right. Thank you. I had to write an awful lot of things down here so I could remember. <laughs> okay. Interview complete.